Hi everyone, Virtual Ninja here bringing you guys a brand new list. Today we're going to be going over the top 5 Yu-Gi-Oh decks for beginner players. We're going to be going over some decks that are not only fun and simple, but teach essential skills and mechanics that are important for beginner players looking to improve. So let's stop wasting time and get right into the list. At number 5, Dark Magician. Dark Magician is a simple and fun deck that's a great throwback for fans of the original anime. You basically use support cards like Magician's Rod and Apprentice Illusion Magician in order to search for the cards that you need, and then you use your cards like Eternal Soul and Dark Magical Circle in order to get effects once you get your Dark Magicians out, and to get the Dark Magicians out in the first place. Now, most of the cards in the deck have interactions that are very easy to understand, such as having Dark Magician the Eternal Knight, plus Eternal Soul in order to make a big beat stick that is really annoying to deal with. Now, there are two main appeals to beginners with this deck. One, the deck covers a wide variety of basic cards and mechanics, such as how continuous spells and traps work, and how to fusion summon with cards of Arrive Timaeus. And Dark Magician himself is extremely iconic, it's basically part of the Yu-Gi-Oh brand. So beginner players familiar with the franchise will be more than happy to try the deck out. So overall, Dark Magician has a great balance of both teaching basic game mechanics and allowing them to have strong and fairly consistent boards. They definitely won't be winning regionals anytime soon, but it is definitely a strong deck for casual players. At number 4, Dinos. Dinos is a great deck for players in more aggressive play who are looking to do cool combos rather than taking the slower route with a deck like Dark Magicians. There are two main variants of dinosaurs. True Draco Dinos, which involves using Dragonic Diagram to trigger dinosaurs' effects on destruction while gaining card advantage and pushing monsters like Master Beast onto the board, and Pure Dinos, which is much more aggressive and fast and focus on turboing out huge beat sticks like Ultimate Conductor Tyranno through support cards like Double Evolution Pill. Now, Dinos not only teaches how to look for strong interactions between cards, but also allows beginner players to try basic combos and gradually optimize them over time. Now, while the True Jago variant can be a bit hard for newer players to understand, especially with its whole extra tribute summon thing with its continuous traps and spells, the pure variant of Dinos is not only simpler, but it is also way cheaper. Like, if you're on a really, really super tight budget, you can just buy three Dino Smashers Fury Structure decks and go at it. Plus, as you continue to improve at Yu-Gi-Oh!, you'll be able to play Dino better and figure out the more nuances in each of your combos and optimize your plays. It also goes the other way around, so as you learn to optimize your plays with Dinos, you'll gradually learn how to better manage your resources and optimize your plays in Yu-Gi-Oh! So overall, Dinos is a fun budget deck that'll appeal to people looking for an aggressive deck that will really grow with them over time. At number 3, Magispectors. Now obviously this deck isn't at full power since Magispector Unicorn Kirin is at 0, although it'd be pretty funny if Konami put it to 1 as a laugh and just watched the madness happen. So, Magispectors are a group of furries, I mean monsters, that revolve around being untargetable and indestructible by your opponent's card effects. Basically, your opponent has to kill them through battle, which can be really hard for them thanks to your Magispector back row, your spells and traps. Your Magispector spells and traps, such as Magispector Tornado, allows you to tribute one of your Magispector monsters on the field to have powerful disruption effects that will really make it hard for your opponent to establish board presence. Plus, since your Magispectors are pendulum monsters, They'll go to the extra deck face up after being tributed, which allows them to be pendulum summoned back onto the field later on into an extra monster zone or a zone that a link monster is pointing to. Now, even without the almighty Kirin, Magispectors is still a very consistent casual deck that makes the pendulum mechanic really simple to understand. And the reason why I feel that Magispectors is amazing for teaching pendulum mechanics is because the scales don't have any effects. So all you have to worry about when playing the deck in terms of pendulum summoning is putting a low scale, so one of your 2s, and a high scale, so one of your 5s onto the board in order to go off and make that pendulum summon occur. Now if you have a lot of money, uh, the deck now synergizes really well with the new pendulum link monster, Heavy Metal Foes Electromite. And besides Electromite, the deck is still really cheap, so if you don't want to buy Electromite and get that really good link monster, that's perfectly okay. The only really expensive card in the deck is their field spell card, Majesty's Pegasus, and you definitely need that if you're playing the pure version. So overall, if you want to play a deck that not only swarms the board, but also stops your opponent's plays, then Magispectors is a great, simple option that will help explain the pendulum mechanic straight to you in a simple manner. At number 2, Blue Eyes. I mean, how could I put Dark Magicians on this list without putting its competitor? Blue Eyes is a deck that involves spamming level 8 dragons onto the field using your new level 1 support cards and your spells. 
such as using Return of the Dragon Lords in order to special summon monsters back onto the field, or using White Stone of Legend in order to get monsters from your deck onto the field. Now this allows you to go into a variety of Synchro and Xyz plays depending on the situation and board you want to build. Now overall all the monsters in the deck all have very simple effects, even though some of them can be really really long, particularly cards like Sage with Eyes of Blue. So it'll be really easy to actually find some cool interactions with your cards, such as being able to make the infamously annoying Crystal Wing Synchro Dragon, which will really screw over your opponent, especially if they're reliant on monster effects. Now the deck is able to make some very very powerful boards at the cost of quite a bit of consistency to be honest, which is why you see people maxing out draw power cards like Traden. Plus if you're into ritual monsters like Relinquished, you can play a Chaos Max variant, which although won't be anywhere near the consistency of the already somewhat inconsistent normal Blue Eyes version, it'll be a really fun and easy variant that can make for some really funny OTKs. Now, the deck allows for a lot of flexibility and allows you to build the variant that fits your playstyle. So if you're a fan of the anime or Seto Kaiba and just want to wipe your opponent's field with some high attack dragons, then I think Blue Eyes is the right deck for you, especially if you're looking for something simple that will fit your playstyle, whatever it is. Now before we get to number one on this list, I just want to remind you guys, if you guys are enjoying the video, be sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell, and if you really want to support the channel, be sure to check out my Patreon where you can get rewards starting at only $1. And our best deck for beginners is Lightsworns. Lightsworns has been and probably always will be the best deck for any beginner player, hands down. It not only teaches you basic graveyard interactions, which is one of the most important elements in modern Yu-Gi-Oh!, but it also helps you learn the importance of resource management, which is important for any card game you play, whether it be Yu-Gi-Oh or something else. Now, Lightsworn is a light-based archetype around sending you the top cards from your deck to your graveyard, or milling cards from your deck. This gradually sets up for some really strong monster effects, and will eventually allow you to special summon Judgment Dragon, the Lightsworn boss monster that can wipe the entire field, the entire field, for only 1,000 life points. Plus the deck does dabble a bit into Xyz monsters, using cards like Minerva in order to send more cards to the graveyard and trigger Lightstorm monsters to graveyard effects. Now if you want to play a more complex yet stronger variant, the deck also synergizes really well with zombies, which helps turbo out powerful level 8 synchros like Psyframe Lord Omega in order to rip through your opponent's hand and get rid of their resources. So the deck is simple, fun, and cheap assuming you don't play the more expensive zombie version and it'll teach you important Yu-Gi-Oh skills and concepts that will help you with more complex and nuanced decks that aren't really fit well for beginners, such as Burning Abyss. So if you want a deck with an insane boss monster and want to learn skills that'll help you down the road, Lightsworns is the objectively best option for you, especially if you don't want to break the bank. So hopefully this video will have given you guys a couple ideas for some solid decks that'll help you learn the game of Yu-Gi-Oh in a fun way. If you enjoyed the video, be sure to share the video with your friends, subscribe, and hit that notification bell so you can be there to support this type of high quality Yu-Gi-Oh! content. Now if you really want to go above and beyond in supporting the channel, you can support me by becoming a member on my Patreon, where you can receive cool perks starting at only $1 a month. The link to my Patreon is available in the description. So thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you all in the next video.